Okay. So we're talking <coughs> opencast.org. And um, I don't know whether you know this, but this is actually the page I use if I edit anything on the website. And this is the closest I get to technical stuff. This is me feeling as a coder or whatever you folks call yourself. If, if I want to do a minor edit on, on this website, I have to go to GitHub and do a small change in any post or site or whatever we have on this website. And it's really not very comfortable. Now, I'm used to not using comfortable stuff because it's the good stuff for other people. But then again, I get suspicious if these other people also complain about the solution we have. And they do. And therefore, you will hear uh, the following rant by Lars about why we probably have to have a new website. Uh, just as a reminder, this website was built a couple of years ago uh, to substitute the website we had at the time, which, which was built by a commercial company <laughs> even more years ago. Uh, it's a, a duplicate in, in some form, but then again, it was technically on a, on a totally different uh, platform. You want to add something to that? I only want to add, if you give a commercial company uh, the task of building up an easy-to-maintain WordPress website, they can manage to focus too much on the design and uh, make uh, editing WordPress even worse than using what you just saw from Olaf. So you cannot complain that maintaining the old site was even worse. But uh, I can understand uh, your problem with it. So, let's talk about OpenCast.org. And uh, I actually, I think it really fits what uh, Olaf just uh, showed you, because that's actually the part where I'm not mainly complaining about. I do like GitHub, though I have to agree with Olaf that the current state and the current code we use to, to build on GitHub is not very nice. And I'm saying this as, this as a developer because um, I've received emails from Olaf, for example, saying that there's something broken. Can you fix that? And the thing is that I've not only received these emails from Olaf, but from some of our developers as well. And I know of the reasons why it was built the way it was built, but um, I really disagree with, with building something that is for, for some reason, and there are reasons behind it, because uh, 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 why it's the way it is. Because we need this little bubble over here and we need these boxes over there. We absolutely need that at the cost of really no maintainability. And that's something which I personally will complain about in, in this talk in a way. And uh, I like GitHub because people can contribute and we have seen different contributions over time. And I like Markdown because it's simple. And, and stuff like that, but I really don't like uh, um, if things become unmaintainable. And yeah, let's, let's, let me show you a few of the things which I think are problematic in the website. And let's talk about features first. Features, we've heard that it's very, very important and we need to talk about this from a marketing perspective. That's why we have a feature section on the website. However, we do not only have this feature section on the website because, either you know, uh, features are important. We actually have a second feature uh, section on the website. These feature sections highlight different features. Apparently, OpenCast works differently at different parts. And a few things the, which are highlighted in here are also just not true. There are things in there which OpenCast does not have. And yeah, really, I mean, 
I can understand that we should talk about features, but is there any need for two feature sections instead of having one which actually is accurate and up to date and works? I don't think there is. And I think that, and I come back to this, as the reason why there are multiple sections of this is because overall there's a lot of stuff in the website and people maybe may forget that there is already something in there which could be polished and, and really be usable. Instead, people add it again at a different place. And uh, you'll see that I always come back to you to maintainability and have it being uh, just a little bit less, but uh, something clean instead. So, yeah, um, talking about, about features and stuff like that, let's also talk about pictures. And uh, looking at our picture, I really noticed that we have no cat pictures on there. So that's probably something to work on. But we have other pictures. Like if we talk about benefits of OpenCast, it seems like every one of us should have a sports car. I, I, I mean, really, why is this picture on our website? There's no sane reason for it to be there. And even looking at the picture below that, that's also not a great picture. But I'm, from a technical point of view, I actually know why these pictures are on there. But the real reason why these pictures are on there, and Olaf offered, by the way, to, to buy new pictures, but even that, then you need to spend a lot of time finding the right pictures and, and doing stuff like that. And this website is built so that you can pay, take a lot of pictures in there. And again, it's maintainability, so if you need a lot and if you want a lot, I mean, it's nice if at the end everything's there, but you need a lot of time to, to work on this. And that is, by the way, why we have sections like these. Apparently, you can reuse the same pictures, even on the same page, multiple times. Very, very sane. If you scroll up a little bit, of course, there are other pictures, but even they got reused. And if you scroll even more up, I mean, why only have the same picture three times on, on one page if you can have it four times on the same page? Again, I can really understand why these are here because you would need to uh, find pictures, and if you just want to add a, a paragraph, you need to spend the time and find these pictures. But it doesn't really help. And so imagine the same site, and maybe only two pictures on there, which would obviously be awful. I don't think so. It would still be okay-ish, yes. Again, having a lot of pictures would be nice, but it would still be okay. And way more maintainable. And, um, yeah, looking at the, the mobile view, we also see that there are a number of technical problems with this. Um, yeah, I mean, this is really readable, obviously. Um, and again, it's because the decision was made that we need this box layout, which the old website had, and that we need all these pictures in there, instead of just having a few ones in there and, and stuff like that. Um, and by the way, this box layout is exactly the reason also why, why Olaf thinks it's extremely hard to edit something, because that's building also a layer com of complexity in, in the code which is used to build this. And uh, not writing the text, that's probably fine, but adding exactly this. So, Let's talk about other pictures. You probably have seen this button. And I was wondering why uh, Lowe is not a sponsor of OpenCast. This is also the first picture used on the website, which is, means that if you link our website from Twitter or Facebook, this is a picture people will see. And by the way, not with the demo and, and the, it's the overlay, but really, mostly what they will see is Lowe. Oh, so they can't sponsor us anymore. But again, I can understand why people choose per pictures. I would probably do that too if I had to choose all these pictures. But it really doesn't help. And just 
saying, going a step back and deciding, okay, yeah, it, it would be nice, but it's probably also okay to have less, but having something that is maintainable, that's, that's the key here. But let's go away from pictures because I could show you more and more and more pictures and let's instead have a look at uh, structure and information and start. And let's start with something people look at me weird if I bring up something like that. Let's talk about personas. Um, because apparently developers can't talk about stuff like that. That's not what developers do. Um, anyway, looking at, at a project in general, uh, you, it's always a good idea to build up personas and I will not do that completely with you here. But uh, essentially what you would do to, to construct a person who will look at uh, or have a, has a different background and then imagine how such a person could look at something like that. And for the website I can imagine a number of, of people looking at this. Uh, for example, there can be a lecturer who is interested in lecture capture and will look at that. There can be a decision maker who wants to make the decision of if you roll out open cost at your institution or not. Uh, that's what Olaf yesterday talked about where the roadmap comes, comes in handy. Um, there is, a, could be a technician where someone else told them, yeah, in, install this thing. Uh, and they go to the website and want to install it. So let's get back to the buttons. Obviously, let's think about I'm the technician. I mean, I'm, a, I'm usually very technical, so I want to install OpenCast, and what I do, obviously, is to click on the huge installation button. My expectation would be that I get instructions of how to install OpenCast. Where I get instead is something like this. And by the way, this is a current website. So what it tells you is that our latest release is OpenCast 7, and specifically 7.4, which even for the 7 releases is not accurate. Um, if you visit our website, I would say 99% of the cases, you will actually get an incorrect number here, because this is maintained manually. And obviously, this does not work. We had that, by the way, on the old website. I've constantly complained about that. It got ripped out for the new website, and then was rebuilt for the new website. And having something like this really doesn't help, again, maintainability. And if, for example, we would have linked just the, the overview of our releases we actually have on, on our GitHub page, for example, it had the same value, it had the same content, and it's basically automated. So we would never have to add that again. But um, it's not the only th uh, web bad thing on this website. It's, it's only also highlighting old versions. Remember, you were probably a new technician coming to this website, and this thing is talking about open cost four ish or three or whatever things. You don't need this information because you're hopefully not going to install OpenCast 4 right now. If you do that, that's, that's, that's really not good. We shouldn't highlight something like that, but just throw it out. Um, and even further, remember, we clicked on this huge button and expected probably to go to the installation page. And I highlight here where I need to click Next to actually go to the documentation of how, where I find about, uh, things about the installation. So actually read, need to read all this text and then can continue. Again, something, this whole page is absolutely ridiculous, I would say, and we really don't need it. It's only, again, more maintenance we need to do, and even with the maintenance, so even if this would be accurate, I think it's, it's not worth having. <sighs> yeah, but let's get back to structure and, and um, let's get away from these personas and take a broader view at this. And let's get back to these buttons. So let's say I click on the left button. So we're not going to, to install this, but we expect a demo. So a demo, I don't know, but if I click on such a button, I would probably expect to see 
either an opencast installation or maybe a video about an opencast installation and, and doing stuff like that. Probably the, the former. What I get instead is a bunch of text. And luckily, at the bottom of this text, at least I get a link to the actual demo. Again, we could probably spare this page and don't need this page. You could link them directly. Continuing on this and going back to these buttons, let's suppose instead of clicking the left button, I click the right button. And where I'm going to end is on this page, which, by the way, if you haven't noticed, is the exact same fucking page I was before when I clicked on the other button. So why do we have two buttons for this bringing me to the same page? And truth to be told, if I scroll to the end of this page, there is actually something about the adoption of OpenCast. But this doesn't help. This really doesn't help and it confuses the hell out of me if I'm looking for information on the website. And this is not a single case of very, very weird and confusing uh, uh, ways you, to get around in, in the uh, website. There are actually a lot of them. I think if you click on community or events, I think if, if you click on events, you're on a sub page on, of community, for example, and if you click on the first uh, link you are presented on the events page, you're on a sub page of, of other stuff in the community, which is just weird. And again, it's something I can somewhat understand how this happened, but it's not good. Um, and of course, again, yeah, there are many, many more things. And for example, also this is one page of, of our website. And it's not the only, so there are multiple links which bring me to this page again. Again, maintainability and, and people forget to, to update something or something that this shouldn't be the case. And yeah. At this place, I'm going to stop showing examples because you can find more examples if you want to on your own. Um, but let's rather focus a little bit on problems and solutions. And let's talk about the problems first. And the problems, in, for me, I would say, are really, again, this, this whole concept of maintainability. How much time do we need to spend on this website? And remember that we do this as a community, as basically voluntary work. There's no one paid for working on this website, but it's something we just do. And looking at that and, and then thinking about what we need on this website, um, the more things we want on there, the more things we even want to have there with dynamic content which needs to be manually updated. That's really something which kind of hurts the website. Because uh, going back to the board meeting right uh, in here, um, there was the idea of a progress bar, for example, for features, that's a roadmap. It's absolutely great to have that. If we start to implement that, I promise you that it's broken at the end and we have something that's completely inaccurate and, and really not worth having and just confusing. And that's something that I think happened for multiple things here. And I know that, that I've, I mean, I've spoken to people who, who created and, and started some, to throw something up there. And it's always a good idea, but too, much, too less time to work on this. And the argument I often hear is, um, yeah, but I've, at least I've started to do that, and someone else can continue. No one else will probably continue. That's highly unlikely, unless you, you've spoken to other people and they have the same interests as you have. So throwing that out is, is really a great idea there. And yeah, that, that's basically also part of the solution to, if anything, find something simpler, don't, you don't need to have these complicated boxes which make the editing more complicated. You don't need to have so many dynamic content stuff and things like that which needs to be maintained. Instead, you can actually uh, link dynamic content we 
actually have, like linking the easy releases, which are automatically generated, like um, linking the news posts we, we re always have on, on Twitter and, and on Facebook, because that's something which is maintained by people, and really reducing the, the things we need to edit on here. Also reducing the overall content, because again, thinking about the several feature pages, why not have just one where you highlight a, a nice set of features and that's it. That would be way more beneficial to me. So, and that's where I end and hand over my microphone back to Olaf. Yeah, that's how it usually works. Someone runs and then someone else has to find a solution for uh, what has been ranted at or about. I don't know what the exact term is. Um, anyway, um, so I see a, a, an almost empty uh, lecture hall, but anyway, let me ask you <coughs> whether there's someone who would consider himself or herself a stakeholder in this. And I think that... I think that uh, with that, we know that the solution um, rather doesn't lie with the community, but with the board. And uh, um, I would c consider your talk then, or our talk, um, part of what the feedback is towards the board in order to find a new solution for the website. Um, unless you had one in mind, So again, I actually like GitHub because um, GitHub does work great and, and I've seen it work great on, on other uh, communities and, and other websites. However, it's just the additional layer we put on that, for example. And my suggestion would really be to, to reduce this additional layer, throw it out, use the default theme we have here, not build anything on our own, and then just try to reduce the content to something which is important, uh, think a little bit about the personas and, and start from that. And then also, and that is long time imputability, think about if we want to add this, if this is really important to add, and most importantly, how we can maintain this in the long term. So I, I would probably stick with, with GitHub and see is the editing there. Um, from my point of view, I would totally uh, assist you that at least keeping it more simple in GitHub, writing Markdown may not be liked by some, uh, but on the other hand, I can say it's good to do if you don't want to have design in a way, or have a design that is very general because you have a default CSS. Looking at the theme that we have, and it turned out it was very similar to the original theme that uh, the design agency created for us. Uh, it seemed like a good fit looking at the details and being the one who took a few mistakes in creating the box uh, design, at least. Um, uh, I know that it's not good to write, and maybe we should get rid of some. And maybe also... Uh, Instead of starting something immediately, we should have a look at uh, websites from other open source projects that we find a good example or not. So, in a way, I have the feeling um, if we always point to GitHub, to docs.opencast and so on from a very basic page, um, I am not sure how this will be liked or not by people completely new to uh, our project, so who are, want to get some information. But I may be wrong, so we have to do a little bit research. We might have a look at how others are doing, because, for example, we would always have design switches when we go to GitHub. If we go to the docs, okay, at the docs we might adopt a little bit, but um, uh, if you come to a page and as soon as you click the first link, you are somewhere else, uh, I'm not sure, but we might also be able to adopt uh, 
in design on our page to, uh, for example, look more like the Opencast admin UI or whatever we have to be more consistent there. Um, yeah, I just want to share some experience. Um, the Opencast 2020 website is an excellent example how to make a website very fast and how to make it look bad very fast. Uh, we needed something we didn't need to put much effort into, so the GitHub pages were an ex excellent uh, platform for that. It started out okay, but nobody was reviewing the content, same problem. We wanted to add some content really fast, and then we ended up with something that was not responsive, and yeah, well, everybody knows the website, so yeah. Um. So the, the, the problem is indeed reducing the content, reviewing the content. Um, that's the main problem, I, I think. Not the technology per se. No, um, I would also say the technology could be okay, but again, looking at stakeholders there, if we, for example, say that Olaf and other people more from a management perspective are the ones to maintain it with a WIG editor and so on might be more welcome and might also uh, keep us better in with a fixed WordPress theme and still be um, uh, better um, adaptive to mobile and so on. I think, I think you, you um, missed the point that Thomas was making. I think that we uh, have to see that technology is probably not the issue we're talking. So whether that's WordPress, which would be more suited for, for me and, and others, probably not so technical, or something else, the, the, we have to see who's responsible for that. For you to know, the board actually has a responsibility, but it is a shared responsibility amongst, uh, amongst us over various parts of the website. And as you can imagine, it's not the favorite job of those board members you know, including those absent to every now and then revisit the website. So every fault that uh, um, Lars showed us could be tracked down to a person, uh, uh, part of the board, uh, who didn't uh, update that particular se section or who didn't look into the particular image being replaced, etc., etc., etc. If that, uh, and, and, and in that context, it doesn't matter what, what technology they use. So we will have to find a different solution as far as responsibility is concerned. That's what I think. Last statement from you, because I would like to end on time. Okay, very shortly. Uh, by the way, I, would, I haven't counted this, but I would say half of the changes coming in from the community right now. So basically, Olaf is doing a lot of changes, and then there are, are different ch smaller changes often from, from the community. And also, if you look at uh, how this works on, on mobile devices and things like that, the base design actually works perfectly on mobile devices. It's just our, oh, we need this additional technical stuff in there. That's what didn't work out right now. Okay, I guess. We are close to dinner then. Uh, dinner, the lunch, uh, sorry. Uh. We're also closer to dinner, that's true. Uh, we're closer to the end of the conference also. There are uh, a couple of sessions in the afternoon. We will continue with Frank after the break. And, and sorry. And enjoy lunch. Thank you. <laughs>